Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about Profile Guided Optimization, or PGO. So there are many optimizations that your compiler can't or won't perform because it doesn't have the necessary context about what happens at runtime. So it may not make certain code scheduling decisions because your compiler doesn't know, you know what certain branch probabilities are going to be, so whether or not a branch is mostly taken or mostly not taken. Likewise, it may not be able to perform optimizations like strength reduction because your compiler simply doesn't know what a value is going to be at compile time. It may only be known at runtime. So say an expensive division instruction may not be able to be replaced by a, a much less expensive right shift operation. So PGO really occurs in three steps. So in step one, you tell your compiler to add some instrumentation to your application. So you basically tell your compiler to add some extra code to collect information about say, you know, which branches are taken or not taken most frequently and what values are being generated. So we can do that in GCC with dash F profile generate. So it's used for adding some instrumentation to our application for profiling. In step two, we actually run our application. At the very end, it dumps out all of this information into a file. Then in step three, we can just feed this file back to our compiler as some feedback so the compiler can do a better job the next time it compiles this application. Now with the context about you know, how this code looks or you know, what code is actually executing at runtime. So let's look at a quick example here to show off PGO. It'll be this mod bench. So we have two benchmarks that are doing modulo on 4096 numbers here. So one of them will use an idiv instruction because we've hidden the value we're doing modulo by through some indirection as an argument and another benchmark here that has the number as an immediate here. So this will pretty easily get the strength reduction optimization. The expensive idiv uh, instruction will be replaced by some shifts and multiplies and uh, subtracts. So something that's much less expensive to do. So before we do uh, PGO, let's just see what happens. We don't give the compiler uh, any information about what happens at, say, uh, at runtime. So you can see here, we're, we're compiling with O3 optimizations, mArch, m2, and equals native, link time optimization. Uh, the only thing we've disabled really is uh, vectorization. And this is just because the division benchmark won't be vectorized. So we'll just try to make the comparison slightly uh, more fair by just doing a single element at a time in both benchmarks. So let's go ahead and say, look at the assembly here. And we can do that with just perf record and run our benchmark. So as far as performance goes, we can see that SR mod is about eight times faster than base mod here. And this is going to be because of the strength reduction optimization. So if we do perf report, we can see that in base mod, all we're really doing is each iteration of the loop computing one modulo using an idiv instruction here, which is taking about 96% of our time. Then we can see an SR mod over here. So with strength reduction, we now have many more instructions here that are much cheaper. So multiplications, shifts, subtracts, multiplication, more subtraction, basically avoiding that very expensive idiv instruction with much cheaper um, arithmetic. Okay. So this is with just information known at uh, compile time. So now let's see if profile guided optimization can help us out, especially in the base mod case where we're using that idiv instruction. So all I need to do here is first add this F profile generate flag. And I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and add a link to this instrumentation options uh, below the video as well, if you want to check it out for yourself. So I'll just add dash F uh, profile uh, generate. So this will add the instrumentation for us. We don't need to do anything else. And I'll do dash, uh, I'll do perf record again, rather, so we can look at the assembly and see how it changes. So you can see our base mod looks like it got way slower, almost two times slower here. But that's just because we're doing some extra instrumentation now. We have some extra code inside of our benchmark. So if we look in something like base mod, you can see our loop has grown quite a bit. But that's because we're actually profiling values each iteration of the loop. So our loop got a bit longer. We have some extra code in here, but it's okay that our uh, application got a bit slower here. This is just the profiling run. This isn't the uh, this isn't the run you know basically at full speed. This is with all the overhead from profiling. And you know let's go ahead and go back real quick, and you can see that with um, SR mod as well, there's no uh, instrumentation inside of the main loop itself. So the compiler must not have thought you know there's not really any values to profile here. But you can see some other calls or jumps around to things like this gcov, so some other uh, profiling information is being collected over here. So let's go ahead and exit out of here, and you can see we have our statistics in this modbench.gcda. 
So that contains all our information from the instrument, uh, all the information from our instrumentation, that is. So all we need to do now is recompile our application and replace fprofile generate with fprofile use, and it will automatically look in this directory for that GCDA file. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. And if we go ahead and scroll up a bit, let's just kind of remind ourselves of the values uh, we were looking at as far as timing goes. So originally, without any runtime information, base mod was about 26 microseconds, and SR mod was about you know 3.2 microseconds as far as performance goes. So now let's see what happens uh, now that we've used profile guided optimization. So we'll use perf record so we can look at the assembly as well. So we'll perf record on mod bench. And now you can see that base mod is down to about four, uh, 4 4.1 microseconds here. So about eight times faster now, or well, sorry, around six times faster now. So down from about 26 microseconds down to say four microseconds. And SR mod got a little faster too. So from you know a little over three microseconds, 3.24 microseconds down to uh, 2.81 microseconds. So even faster now. So let's see what happens uh, if we look at perf report, so at the assembly. So now because you know our compiler added the instrumentation to look at values now, you can see it was able to perform a strength reduction optimization. So no division instructions anymore. You can see just a combination of multiplies and shifts and subtracts. So it was able to you know, greatly improve our performance uh, by performing strength reduction with that information from uh, runtime. And then in SR mod, it looks like instead of just performing one uh, uh, module using the strength reduction in implementation, each iteration of the loop, it unrolled the loop by four. And now it looks like it's doing four each iteration of the loop, right? So it, it ended up helping out both our applications, in this case, in different ways. So one of them by profiling the values and uh, performing uh, strength reduction, and the other one by, you know, looking to see if loop unrolling was profitable here because there wasn't really anything to do. Uh, there wasn't many other optimizations that it could perform, right? But it did decide that loop um, rolling was profitable here. So this is a basic introduction to profile guided optimization, just a simple way of uh, moving some of the burden of optimization away from the programmer back to the compiler by giving your compiler some context about what's going on at runtime. So as always, you can check out any of this code at my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. As always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And also, as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.